Hey, what time is it? Why, it's hat 30. <laughs> Where would we be without Kickstarter? It's the crowdfunding website that gave us masterpieces such as Bear Simulator, an all pug production of the play Hamlet, and a bowl of potato salad. A $55,000 bowl of potato salad. Those projects were funded by morons. Morons and evil people. Evil. Evil people. Luckily, there's a section of the population with the ability to feel at least an ounce of shame, and they fund useful and functional projects. Projects like A Hat in Time. A Hat in Time is the age-old tale of an unsupervised child with a top hat traveling through outer space. Everything is going smoothly. That is until a mafia cook breaks her ship and releases all of her hourglasses that apparently power the thing somehow, and now it's up to her to rescue them and get back home. You know, some real classic Hemingway shit. This game is filled to the brim with secrets and references, so I'd advise you to put on your thinking caps because I'm about to berate you with so much knowledge that you'll say, Whoa! Slow down there, cowboy. Hat. Cowboy hat. <sighs> anyway, this is Smart Attack, and, like, I don't know. I'm just really, like, punned out with all that hat nonsense back there. I'm like, don't eat red meat or something. It's bad for your heart, I guess. Here's five things you didn't know about a hat in time. Number five. A Hat in Time is full of creative and challenging level design, and Alpine Skyline is no different. It's an entire civilization existing in the mountaintops above the clouds. Your job is to explore the different peaks and find the timepieces hidden within them. Most people don't know that the four main peaks actually correspond to each of the four elements. You know, like, from Avatar. The Lava Cake Peak is clearly fire. The Birdhouse Peak represents air. The Windmill is, uh, air again, I guess. And the Twilight Bell is, um... Well, it's clearly, uh... Number four! The soundtrack for this game is perhaps one of its biggest highlights, and composer Pascal Michael Stiefel expertly captures the mood for each area. Several guest composers also contributed to the soundtrack, such as Grant Kirkhope of Banjo-Kazooie and Viva Pinata fame. Now, it's no secret that the developers, Gears for Breakfast, are fans of birds. I mean, the entire second chapter is almost exclusively dedicated to bird-related content. As such, the team wanted to have a guest composer who was also a lover of birds to write a couple tracks for this chapter. And who better to ask than famed 20th century classical composer and ornithologist Olivier Messiaen. I'll tell you who better. Someone alive, because he's been dead for 26 years. Either way, the developers wanted to add some of his existing works to the Battle of the Birds chapter, but eventually decided to scrap the concept for one reason or another. But, if you dig into the game's code, you can find the remnants of Messian's music in the files for some levels. Take a listen. Honestly, I can't tell which one I like more. The main antagonist in A Hat in Time is Mustache Girl, a cheeky lass with a ferocious face caterpillar. She started out as an ally, but quickly turned to the dark side after witnessing the power of your time pieces. But this wasn't always the case. In earlier builds of the game, Mustache Girl was supposed to remain your friend and occasionally show up to help you in each chapter. The real foe would be someone much more sinister. A foe so dark and unexpected that it would make the game's scary world seem a little less scary. That's right, it's Roomby the Roomba. Tired of all the abuse she takes, compounded by the fact that there's an in-game achievement for assaulting her, Roomby would lash out, revealing that it was she who alerted the Mafia authorities to collect your toll. It was she who loosened the time vault, making sure all your fuel would be lost in the ensuing carnage. And you were none the wiser. Roomby was royalty on her planet, and you took that away from her. All because of your selfish need to have clean carpets at all times of the day without the backbreaking work of lugging around a traditional vacuum cleaner. And then you could be ready to entertain guests at a moment's notice. But then I guess the developers thought, hey, mustaches look kinda evil, and went with that. 
number two! Now it's no secret that A Hat in Time takes a lot of inspiration from previous games that the developers love, such as Wind Waker's graphical style and the collectathon nature of games like Banjo Kazooie and DK64. Another game that heavily influenced A Hat in Time is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Fans have been quick to point out the similarities between Snatcher and the Cursed Box Monster, as well as the characters that lose their contact lenses, and even the fact that both games have a mystery solving train section. But there's plenty more references if you dig deep enough. Firstly, Mustache Girl. Where did she come from? Who else do we know that also has a mustache and appears in Paper Mario? Toadsworth. Second, Mafia Town is a seaside town full of mafia men who cook. And Rogueport is a seaside town full of rogues, one of which happens to cook. DJ Grooves is a dancing penguin. There's penguins in Mario. And Paper Mario has a shadow queen. In the Subcon Forest, Vanessa is a shadowy queen. Yes, queen. One. There's still one mystery that surrounds the game to this day, and it has to do with the studio that created it, Gears for Breakfast. Just how did they come up with a name like that, you ask? No one I know eats Gears as part of their morning routine. Well, after quite a bit of research, I found the answer. You see, Jonas Karlev, the director of the studio, is from Denmark. A quick Google search shows that most Danish breakfasts consists of coffee or tea paired with some sort of bread-meat-cheese combination. At this point, you're thinking, huh, no gears, I guess the trail stops here. But you'd be very wrong, my friend. Everyone knows during festive occasions such as birthdays or anniversaries, the Danes will break out some gammeldansk, a liquor distilled in southeast Sjælland. And where have we seen that word dansk before? That's right, cookies. Specifically those disgusting butter cookies your grandma brings over for Christmas and you just use the tin for sewing supplies. But wait a minute, what's this? A pretzel-shaped cookie? That's madness. And where do pretzels originate from? Most people would think Germany, but it would seem the answer is more complicated. The origin of pretzels have been traced as far back as ancient monks in Italy, while others believe the French hold the claim. Hmm, Germany, Denmark, France, Italy. When's the last time we saw all of these countries intertwined? Could it be World War II? World War II. World War II. World War. Gears of War. Gears for breakfast. It all makes perfect sense. Hey, now what time is it? Oh, it's still hat 30? Dang, I thought it was time to subscribe.